today I'll be showing you my favorite go-to equipment that I take along with me on my multi-day e-bike wild camping adventures. After years of experience wild camping and cycling, these are my items that I have accumulated and have come to rely on, chosen with weight, functionality and budget in mind. This is my personal setup, what works for me, uh, and I'll break it down item by item from the essentials to the luxuries. I'm not showing off, I'm not promoting any brands, and I'm hoping to learn something from the process, what I can improve for next year. Right, let's start with the bike. I ride a customized 2021 Hemiway Cruiser electric fat bike. It has a 250 watt brushless gear hub motor with 80 Newton meters of torque. A 48 volt, 17.5 amp hour Samsung lithium ion battery with a custom woodland camo painted outer casing. 26 by four inch puncture proof fat tires, Shimano seven speed shift system, automatic braking LED light, 48 volt headlamp, a uh, half twist throttle, uh, NTX suspension seat post and front rack. Uh, the bike is heavy, weighing it 32 kilos, but it has a solid durable feel, stable off the trail and comfortable ride. It has a total payload capacity of 160 kilos, ideal for my backpacking requirements. Right, onto the bags. I use a free bag system, on the rear rack, I have two Ortlieb Back Roller Classic Panniers. Fully waterproof with a roll-up closure, 40 litres total capacity and an inside pocket to keep the smaller items easily accessible. Uh, sitting on top of the rack, I have my Ortlieb Rack Pack, a 31 litre fully waterproof roll top bag, ideal for storing larger items like my tent and water bottles. It can be combined with my panniers by buckle and it's stable during long rides. A really good purchase. My backpack is a Savota Jaeger M 22 litre volume. 1000D polyamide fabric with polyurethane coating. It's been with me on many a downpour and kept my gear safe and dry. Not too bulky and comfortable to wear on a bike as long as you're not overpacking it. That's one of my favorite backpacks. First aid kit, of course, I keep in my rucksack, always ready for when I need it, and make sure it's all topped up for every trip. This is probably my most essential bit of kit. Always accompanying me on this ride is this Fisher foot level pump. It weighs 550 grams and comes in a nice compact size. In this green bag here are other bicycle maintenance and repair essentials, a cycling multi-tool, an adjustable spanner and a pair of pliers make up the tools, a bottle of slime, enough for both tyres to plug any perforations and a puncture repair kit and spare inner tubes. For the bike I have my camouflage motorcycle cover, uh, this is not only to protect the bike's electronic components from the elements, but to hide the bike in stealth camping situations. It's also a form of security as it's not immediately clear that it's an expensive bike hiding under the cover. Speaking of security, I have a lot of options for locking up my bike, but my go-to lock for e-bike while camping is this bike alarm disc lock. The alarm is it's ear piercing at 120 decibels and I only engage it when I'm away from camp but the lock is primarily to stop anyone from wheeling my bike away given the opportunity. It weighs almost a kilo and I'm sure there are lighter variants out there but it's something that I've had for a while and I like getting my money's worth out of what I've got. This outdoor knife from Wolfgang's has come in handy on many occasion. Often I've needed to cut some paracord or sharpen the end of a stick at camp. It's like my first aid kit. You might not need it, but it's there when you do. Also, being out in the middle of nowhere, it's, it's nice to have at least something useful to defend yourself with if needs be. 
for shelter I use this MSR Elixir two-person tent with a pack weight of 2.7 kilos it's fairly light and quick to set up with a floor dimension of 213 by 127 centimeters it can comfor comfortably accommodate me and my adult dog two doors two vestibules uh, well ventilated in a tent almost no condensation buildup throughout the year in my part of the world the rainfly is 68 denier polyester I've been out in heavy downpours and stormy weather in this tent and it's kept me dry it, it really hasn't let me down this is my DD 4x4 camouflage tarp it has 19 attachment points and is made from 190T polyester with a polyurethane 3000 mm coating seam taped and fully waterproof a bit on the big side for my solo camping requirements this size is more ideal for communal shelter but something I already owned for some time and I really like it, it's a good product my ridgeline is a 10 metre long 9 mm diameter olive green bit of rope it has a bit of a stretch in it but when combined with this figure 9 rope tensioner it works really well this roll up bag stores my tent pegs, guy lines, carabiners and spare parts I like categorizing my gear and I like being organized on a camping trip this bag it helps keep all the little items from going AWOL my sleeping bag is made from a water repellent 210T ripstop polyester has a comfort rating of minus 10 to 15 degrees celsius uh, the zip goes all the way down to the foot box so I can regulate the temperature and use it as a blanket uh, for this reason I use it all, all year round pack weight is 1.6 kilos and when combined with this Corinthia compression strap soft stuff stack it packs up small for lighting I use this black diamond Revolt 350 head torch weatherproof and USB rechargeable uh, it's got great battery life and uh, I don't need to worry about it conking out on me in the middle of the night accompanying my head torch is this old wind up USB rechargeable lamp it's one of my bargain buys uh, it gives off a nice warm light which is great for cooking in the darkness or inside the tent for cooking I have the camping gas twister plus camping stove paired with a CV 470 bottle it's big, it's bulky I could find a smaller alternative but it fits nice inside inside my 800 milliliter cooking pot and it works for me it's really cool for tableware I use these collapsible silicone bowls and kettle uh, silicone has no open pores they don't harbour bacteria and are resistant to high temperatures as well believe me this has seen some some action uh, but it still works the spork and the double wall cup are titanium they're very strong and lightweight I like that the handles on the cup fold back which uh, which saves space in the bag when packing I enjoy a good coffee in the mornings my AeroPress coffee maker comes with me on every trip uh, it takes just a minute to make a good coffee it's really easy to clean as well this cool pack is where I keep my milk, beer, tea, coffee, sugar and snacks it's surprising how much fits in it's a good size and uh, I think I might help myself to a beer since I've got it out <laughs> cheers all right let's continue I carry water not only for hydration but for cooking and traveling with a dog doubles the consumption and makes this a basic but valuable commodity uh, the system that works for me is a combination of a two liter bottle of water and this Catadyne water filter for refills uh, this way I keep the weight down by using up and refilling just the one bottle providing there's a source of water nearby en route on some occasions depending on the location 
I want to get a fire going. My Bushbox XL has seen some use since I bought it. It just ensures that I can keep my hot coals contained for safe disposal and I can also use this as a backup stove for cooking should I need to. It's a heavy bit of kit weighing at 1.7 kilos but I can't imagine a camping trip without a fire so it, it comes along. My Helinox chair is my second biggest item. Uh, it's portable, durable and comfortable. I enjoy sitting in my chair after a long ride and the camouflage design helps me relax knowing that I'm not standing out like a sore thumb. It's a luxury item but I've got the space for it so I bring it along. Next is my aluminium ground spike table by Schwarzabina. It might look comically small but it's a really useful bit of kit. This bag doubles up as a storage compartment so I can keep all my small items together. It's lightweight and packs up to a compact little package. When I'm making videos I bring all my recording equipment with me. I try to keep this as minimal and lightweight as possible. Uh, my GoPro Hero 10, it uh, does most of the filming. I'm using it right now of course but I can't show you. And it's backed up by my old Hero 5. The microphone I use is my indestructible Rode Mic Pro microphone. It's been accidentally dragged along the back of my bike, submerged in rivers, left on a park bench. It's been a loyal servant over the years. Good audio quality and I can't film without it now that my ears are accustomed to its great audio quality. Spare batteries and cables I keep together in a Ziploc bag. Battery pack to recharge my electronics as well. I can also use my e-bike to charge all my electronics in an emergency as well. Extra layers of clothing I like to keep in this Corinthia stuff sack. The compression straps really come in handy for this. Just keep it nice and small so it's easy to put in a bag. That's the lot. Let me know in the comments section what you think of my choice of gear. Feel free to request an in-depth review of any of my cycling or camping gear that I'm happy to share my unbiased opinion and experiences with you all. Uh, please support the channel, give a like and subscribe. Uh, from me, without Naden this time, thanks for watching and ta for now.